So uh, good afternoon. Welcome uh, once again to uh, the webinar, uh, the monthly webinar by uh, Crossover Leadership Journeys. Uh, this is our um, eighth webinar under the banner called uh, Leadership Chaska. And Chaska is uh, in Hindi means addiction, but this is also an acronym for uh, Crossover Hosted Association for Skills and Knowledge Advancement. So. It's a not-for-profit organization and we every month conduct one webinar on a topic of leadership um, and sometimes we invite speakers to come and talk, sometimes I do it, sometimes uh, we have a combination of somebody coming from outside and doing it and uh, those who are joining us for the, uh, for the first time, typically this happens on the third or the fourth Thursday of every month, uh, you can, you know, we have tried to get the timing in such a way that, uh, you know, uh, it's easier for you to schedule that also. Uh, Karthik, I'll just try to make you also a host so that you can manage uh, in case there is some noise, you can unmute them. So I'm making you a co-host and uh, also such, I'll also make you a co-host so you can monitor the uh, noise in case there is anything in the background, you can mute them. Yeah. So I'm making you both co host. Yeah. So, so those who are coming for the first time, uh, a brief introduction about Crossroad Leadership Journeys. Uh, we are a seven year old organization. Um, one of the big, unique, uh, uh, you know, feature that we have is that we usually don't do one off programs. So we do a journey of six months, 12 months, 18 months, uh, depending on how deep the customer wants to go. And uh, if you look at this slide, essentially there are two axes to this slide. You know, one is the success level of an organization, another is the journey of an organization. So uh, if you look at every organization hires people from all over the world and uh, everybody comes with their own mental model. So there is an hybrid culture that gets created and there is a certain level of result a company gets. But when we do the intervention, we work on their mental model, we work on their developmental framework, we work on their immunities to change and try to align the mental model that creates an aligned culture and that gives you a much more higher goal-oriented result. Um, so it's a, absolutely a no-nonsense, clear-cut return on, on investment approach. And the way we do it is that uh, every month there is a workshop and we have programs for all levels. So we have program for campus hires, we have program for associate level, mid level, senior level. We look at four, uh, you know, facets of leadership, self leadership, team leadership, operational and organizational. And uh, as you see, uh, if you uh, get people through all these four facets, uh, they become a more holistic leader than if you look at only one uh, facet of leadership. And the way we do it is that every month there is a workshop and between the month there is a mentoring team that works with the participant to apply the learning in real life. So uh, there is this article they send, video they send, you have to submit the application of learning and then they come back for the next month. And this continues, you know, as I was saying, uh, for six months, 12 months, and we do reviews with the LND team. We invite the leaders to come and talk to them. And uh, we also have coaching for the senior leaders. So this is a broad, I think, uh, quick overview of crossover leadership. And uh, I was just talking to Narsi uh, before that. Today is our eighth uh, webinar. And as you can see, uh, some very interesting topics. We, when we saw it ourselves, we were thinking that uh, these are so relevant topics for uh, for leadership. Uh, we, we, we first started with emotional agility in changing times. And this was a time when I think COVID was in peak and most organizations were going through you know, a lot of challenges. And we thought that we could uh, bring in this emotional agility session. Uh, and, uh, in general, also, this is our first session for every program. So we have done, I think, close to 270 sessions only on emotional intelligence. And then we had this uh, program on becoming a talent magnet. You know, how do you attract talent? Uh, we had session on strategy to results because a lot of companies uh, do have great strategy, but they are not able to really bring in the uh, result uh, that they envisaged in the in the strategy. Um, 
then we had ei meet ci so as i was saying ei is uh, the first part of it but ci is conversation intelligence and we'll bring little bit of conversation intelligence also in the in the session today but ei meet ci was with ravi chatterji ravi chatterji is one of a very senior facilitator and an expert on uh, on this uh, topic on uh, conversation intelligence if you have not read the book by judith glaser i think all of you should get your hands on it it's a fantastic book that you guys should uh, try and uh, take your hands around uh, then we had uh, this 10th r which is unleashing productivity now every organization uh, really is pushing for uh, more for less and in that pressure how do you organize yourself so there is a fantastic research by rory wadden and cal newport and we have combined that to create a very powerful module how do you unleash the 10th hour so generally we have 9 hours of working but how can you get the extra 10th hour and that was the session on that and then executive presence was again done by ravi chatterjee which is a very nice model that we have created called ready and uh, given that if there are you know more people uh, to be chosen from uh, who would the company choose and your executive presence makes a very big difference so we will and all this is available for you on youtube so Uh, please feel free and this deck will come to you all of you will get the deck so there is a link in the deck you can click this deck and but in the last month we did this uh, webinar on um, networking and uh, this is a fantastic again a module uh, so old khan is in gujarati term uh, that uh, means pehchan uh, means your network so we had uh, you know there is an acronym also and you can see the acronym there yeah so these were the seven webinars and i uh, you know and now since we have done this and it's nice it's got a nice rhythm now so we are already planning the next month webinar by a, a very senior uh, sales coach called ramesh durai raj and ramesh has also written a book called uh, the games uh, customers play so we're going to invite him for that session next month so stay tuned uh, as always you'll get Uh, the details over uh, linkedin social media email you can come and join the webinar uh, this is an open program uh, which i always share with all of you we are now doing the seventh batch of emerging leaders program so feel free to uh, you know talk to karthik or pooja adhikari if you want to register uh, you know any of your people or you want to attend yourself uh, because uh, in leadership such journey programs are not available in the market uh, you know most of the programs are like one day two day but no program is like six months duration so this is av available seventh batch is getting launched so you can enroll yourself and do that part yeah and uh, so let's start with uh, you know today's uh, today's session which is uh, uh, communication skills in humble inquiry and i don't know if you all if somebody had read this book uh, by edgar sheen but we're going to use that but before i begin i just want to touch base upon uh, you know this uh, limbic system and rational brain so uh, you would have seen in uh, you know in the earlier ei session or if you have not attended do take a look at the uh, the session you will find that lot of our responses you know come from our past experiences and uh, which is stored in the limbic system and if we were to connect that with rational brain i think we can become much better than uh, what you would be if you were to not use that because if you were to just respond with that default template of the past then you will not see a change in yourself but if you were to connect the limbic system with rational brain we can do that and some of these things that are there in the webinar which is conversation intelligence or today that you are going to lead, learn about communication humble inquiry uh, are going to all come together to make you a better leader and unleash uh, a much more deeper potential in your team so you know in in behavioral science leadership it is not like mathematics you know 1 plus 1 equal to 2 it is all about many things coming together to you know make the shift so when you look at this session today also uh, or even when you go back and think about it try to see as many different elements of different webinars and see for yourself where do you stand and uh, so i'll give little bit of conversation intelligence and then we'll move on to the uh, the topic on communication humble inquiry so i'm going to talk about the story of geeta and ram you know so geeta uh, is a character that 
we always have from our session in EI. So she uh, is uh, she joins an organization as a uh, as a, uh, a fresh graduate, and she, over the years she becomes a delivery head. And uh, she is now meeting Ram, uh, and uh, uh, giving her a, giving him a very good news that uh, Ram, we have won this big deal uh, of fifty people. And uh, I'm so excited to share with you that the customer would want to uh, have you at the site for about three months. And uh, as she says this, Ram plainly says to Gita that, uh, no, I cannot travel. Now, Gita is like absolutely, you know, uh, not only upset with this cold response, but even worried that, you know, if Ram does not go, the client will not really... Uh, agreed to, you know, because that was a big condition that the client had given before agreeing to sign the deal. And because Ram was involved in the entire proposal, he was there in the solutioning. So Gita is like now really worried. So Gita asked Ram that, hey, Ram, uh, you know, can you share with me why you don't want to go? And Ram plainly says that, uh, you know, I, I said I don't want to travel. And, uh, and uh, you know, Gita has, you know, really, uh, you know, getting more and more worried about this, that what will happen to this deal. And third time Gita asked Ram that, you know, uh, if you don't mind, can you share what is the reason you don't want to travel? And Ram again says, no, I don't want to travel. So Gita says that, yeah, I can understand your concern and there must be something that is there in the background and that is not making you travel. But uh, this is a very important project. So can we discuss this tomorrow again? And Ram says, yeah, we can discuss, but I don't want to travel. So Gita says, no problem. And then next day again, Gita meets Ram. So Gita says that, you know, we have actually committed to the client. And you know, if I go back, then the client may just uh, revert the contract. So is there a way we can work out something for you? And she continues to have the conversation for about 15, 20 minutes. And then Ram opens up and Ram says that, uh, my wife is uh, carrying and I don't want to leave her at this time. And Gita says that, yeah, I also had a twin pregnancy and uh, everything went well. Which month she is in? And Ram says it's in second month. So Gita says that I think uh, second month is still very early. And where are Gita's parents? And they start, you know, talking about this and ideating about what are the possibilities. And finally, on the third day, uh, Ram, uh, you know, decides to get Gita's parent for two weeks and his parent for two weeks and uh, Gita agrees to, uh, you know, get him a fly in, fly out every Friday, he comes back and Monday he goes to the client site. And uh, after the sixth week, they get a replacement and they, they, they get the 50 member project. Now, listening to this story, if you were to think about, you know, uh, where do you think this, you know, they started and where they ended and, you know, what made this possible? What did Gita do with So I will just unshare the screen and I would just like to, you know, open up to your thinking that when you look at the story of Gita, where do you think, uh, you know, Gita started or Ram started? And in my conversation, what do you think Gita did well? Anybody can unmute and... A little more personalized approach. Yeah. Yeah, Uma. Yeah, Yogi. Yeah, no, I think I heard, uh, you know, yeah, I think uh, I can see Indra. Yeah, Indra, please, please. I think it was a persistence, you know, the fact that she was um, not willing to give up and mm. willing to explore alternatives, willing to go deeper. Uh, yes. I think that made the difference. Yes, 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 absolutely. So, so Indrajit, when I have a bang on Indrajit, and I can see, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, uh, so, so what happens is what you said is right that uh, it took a while. But when you look at uh, look at the situation of Gita, you know, is it easy that you know when you are so much under pressure that you know you have signed a deal where uh, I think you are almost committed to the client that Ram is going to be there and Ram plainly refuses. How do you handle that pressure? How do you handle yourself in those moments when on one hand you have to commit and the other hand, uh, you know, somebody is just not willing to do that. 
and i would request everybody to turn on their cameras because hardly there are people on camera because uh, it's it's not uh, so conversational when we have no camera and see if you turn on your camera it looks so beautiful yeah so any other thoughts on how does somebody manage such pressure and how does how did geeta do well how did geeta get a solution from ram yeah any thoughts i think she herself stayed calm throughout yeah. and gave it some time like when she said that let's meet tomorrow she gave him also some time to think and gave herself also some time to um, absorb it yeah. yes yes i think yeah one very important thing i feel was like uh, she herself was very rational yeah you want to make somebody rational first of all you have to be rational with that <laughs> if she had an emotional response to his rejection yes that would have closed the case then then and there yes 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 so absolutely i think some of the response have so what we want to explore today is that when you look at uh, what geeta did was i think she really used uh, you know conversation intelligence in the conversation and this is a term that uh, judith glaser you know has uh, has coined and she has drawn upon lot of research already done by lot of people like antonio damasio or richard boyetti then if you can see on the on the right hand side uh, you can see uh, there are two chemicals that we are talking about one is oxytocin and other is cortisol now when you look at conversational intelligence uh, uh, these two chemicals uh, one is a chemical that is uh, like handling stress which is cortisol the other is a chemical which handles uh, you know gives you a lot of happiness a lot of options a lot of conversation now uh, when you are handling so assuming if geeta had not handled it well you know if he had not handled the conversation well lot of cortisol would have secreted so geeta would have said that uh, you know things like you know when when i got you the promotion last year you promised that you will do or when you when you got the you know first appointment letter you said that you will travel to any place the company wants and i mean there could be many such uh, you know ways of conversing but all this would have created cortisol what she did was trying to empathize with him trying to stay calm in those as as, as people said and the more and more oxytocin if you can help secrete the more and more the chances are that people will open up and talk and when you look at this uh, you know fantastic phrase so i'll just give you guys a is a few seconds to read this and uh, 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 just share me anything that comes to your mind when you when you read this uh, definition by judith glaser which is you so powerful and you can like and this is not like just a fictional definition this is like purely a you know definition that uh, in that is well researched by medical so can you imagine that you know uh, that we you know drop out of conversation every 12 to 18 seconds to process what people are saying and second is that we remember what we think about what another person is saying because that is a bigger signal and chemical in your mind so you can imagine you know how do we operate by default as a medical and some of these also can be handled if you look at expectations you know versus aspiration so when you look at it i'm to- i'm not talking about uh, you know big philosophy here you know i'm just talking about a day to day language so when you look at expectation versus aspiration yeah expectation is uh, you know you are just asking for the person on why certain things Uh, has not happened as what you expected aspiration is like so for example if you are you know if if our team member doesn't give give us a report for example expectation would be that i was expecting this report to be given to me by 11 am aspiration would be i think this report if it comes to me by 11 it helps me to send it further to the clients and that really helps our health our csat so the moment you put aspiration you are like idea so for example if the report is not able to meet the 11 o'clock timeline you start ideating with the person that what else 
are you involved in that is that is not making you uh, give 11 11 am but if you go with the expectation part then you are very re resentful about that delay almost sometimes it is in a revenge mode because uh, the way you treat uh, the persons for the delay uh, the same revenge will come back to you so if you are constantly working with expectation uh, you know it closes our brain but if you work with aspiration it opens our brain so i you know if you look at some of these slides it is so powerful and i just want you all to start reflecting upon the way you converse with your people so it's a combination of what you look at in your mindset and what you look at in your language so if you can look at the some of our videos on ai when you look at some of the videos on the last webinars on conversational intelligence you can start building further on that and you will start seeing a shift in the way you operate with your teams because when you operate with your team you start seeing a very different response in fact a humble inquiry when you go further as we will go along you will start really understanding that why certain performance is not happening you know then you start unleashing the challenges the team is going through and if you look at uh, Uh, this, uh, you know, is is because many a times in our culture, I think uh, the challenge is that the more senior you are, uh, the people are actually finding it very difficult to share with the leaders. You know, so in most cultures, uh, speaking to a person with a higher salary is a taboo, which means that uh, if there is something that is to be expected, and if you can't deliver, there is no way for you to go and talk about. Now times are changing. You know, there are. new generation who are very open about doing that but still there are still organization where still there is a taboo and if we were to use humble leadership and humble inquiry what you are going to do is that you are going to build trust and psychological safety and psychological safety is nothing but having people feeling very safe to talk and trust so these are the two uh, you know uh, things that will emerge when we start doing you know humble inquiry with work place and create a psychologically safe place where people not fearful about uh, you know sharing whatever they are going through they don't cover their tracks for being you know punished for what they are sharing so imagine the so sometimes you know you may get a feeling that you know am i uh, you know just uh, trying to be a nice human being so we're not talking about just being nice human being we're talking about performance we are talking about how all this is going to help people unleash their performance and if you look at the framework of humble leadership and i want to pause here for a minute to tell you about this two axes you know one is the axis of transactional versus personal and other is the axis of relational versus individual so you will see lot of when we look around you will see lot of people who are humble leader but there are not many as many who are trying to demonstrate you know heroic leadership now heroic leadership is not looking at a personal element not looking at a long term relationship they are looking at only their own goals they are not looking at the goals of us together so if you look at this quadrant uh, heroic is about transactional and individual humble leadership is about personal and relationship so we are going to talk about two things now one is humble leadership and other is uh, humble inquiry and they go really hand in hand now humble leadership is building relationship with a personal interest uh, which is opposite to the heroic leadership so if you look at the relationship part of uh, humble inquiry you will see there are four levels or rather you know uh, one is the first is the minus one and then the three levels so minus one is you know total in, impersonal relationship which is you will see in mostly in the in the prison or in the jail where the jailer is treating the inmates with total impersonal coercion the second is the transactional role you know the rule based supervision you know typically you will see that in so when you go to a hotel and you know people are checking you in uh, so that is like uh, you know they are nice to you uh, they talk to you in a very professional manner but they are not really looking at building your relationship and then you come to the next level which is level 2 which is really your building uh, you know relationship you are cooperative in your working uh, you are trying to build effective teams but then the, there is a third level which is level 3 which is emotionally intimate total mutual commitment now my question is 
what do you think are the difference between level 2 and level 3 when you look at from a uh, from a leadership perspective what do you think is the difference between level 2 and level 3 I think level two is more process oriented, right? Right, and whereas level three is mostly uh, getting all your passion, uh, you know, probably a commitment to each other, saying that how we can make things happen. <laughs> so okay. it it is just beyond that personal connection, saying that okay, it's just the process aspect of it. Right, right, okay. Thanks, uh, you know, thanks, uh, thanks, Kavita. So. So when we will, uh, you know, when as we explore more, uh, so I just want you all to keep these levels uh, in the background for you, and we will explore more as to uh, where you know you think uh, you know level three can become a challenge in a in a work setup. So the balance between the uh, the intimacy of level three and the formality of level one is where we are trying to play around when you are building relationship with humble inquiry. So when you look at this. i think shifting from level 1 to level 3 will require some of these elements of listening to connect asking the right question where you have no answers because many a times in leadership we assume that we have the answers but possibly those answers come only with our own experience but if we were to explore our team members we'll start finding more answers from them yeah and i think conversation agility if you look at geeta and ram story Uh, Gita did not let the conversation dwindle. You know, she continued to sustain the conversation, build the trust in the conversation, and do that part. Yeah. So if you look at this slide from uh, level one to level two to level three, so in uh, most uh, managerial role, you will see that uh, there is a big telling culture in the organization. Yeah, which is people are telling people what to do. Now the first step when you want to move from level 1 to 2 is moving from telling to asking yeah and uh, the third step is asking to the art of humble inquiry which do you think is much more easier and which you think is much much more tougher on this slide or would you think happen more often in organization when i have not put any, uh, more more uh, text on this but some bullet points for you to guys to think about which do you think is more difficult and why and what do you think happens more often in every organization i think i think it is mostly telling <laughs> I mean, in 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 some cases maybe you can ask for it yes i think that is that is where i think most of the conversation hovers around yes humble inquiry is, is the least one <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can ask any close colleague or friends yeah so if you and uh, bang on somran then what we want to drive here is that there is so much that we are losing out if we don't do humble inquiry because imagine uh, you know when and i sometimes you know i give this example of my son uh, and this example fits into many situation and uh, you know i you might have heard this example in the past also so one of the engineering breaks my son was in at home and i was telling him that uh, you know why don't you go and get the bulb changed uh, in the in the bathroom which was not working for 3 days and uh, so i did the telling and asking him you know and then he said that and they wear this fitted jeans you know most of the youngsters so i gave him a big lecture about the fitted jeans and uh, uh, he pulled out his smartphone from the pocket and i got so irritated that you know he is not speaking anything and is pulling out his smartphone and he went inside the bathroom and uh, he picked clicked the picture of the bulb from the top from the bottom and from the side 
and he came and showed me the picture and then he said why do i need to even take the bulb uh, because in my uh, thinking the bulb has to be carefully taken in the pocket so that it doesn't break and bring the bulb back uh, to home now i had two choices at that time you know i one choice was to get upset with him as a parent and say that you know bahut hushari maar raha hai and you know give him a big lecture one more time other is that you know ask him this question that hey, how did you come this with the idea you know i could never think about the solution myself and luckily i did the second part i asked, i hugged him and i said that this is fantastic i could never think about this now the moment i did this what he had said to me is that uh, you know dad one more thing i have an idea i said what uh, the bhavani electrical you know has whatsapp most likely so i will take the whatsapp number he lives behind our complex uh, next time i'll just send him a picture and ask him to save my number with our location next time he'll just deliver the bulb on the way so imagine i could never get this solution myself if i had not got into humble inquiry if i had just been in the asking and telling mode i would have lost out so much of solution that i have got beautifully uh, just because i was inquiring with him that what do you think about this so in a larger organization i know that there are certain protocols there are certain guidelines one has to follow but in the boundaries of that guideline can we uh, take a pause can we take some time off to find out you know what people are thinking what could be the new possibilities so if you look at the definition of humble inquiry so humble inquiry is not a checklist to follow or a set of pre written questions it is a behavior that comes out of respect curiosity and desire to improve the quality of the conversation by stimulating greater openness and sharing of task relevant information so we are not talking about going all over but we are talking about the work that we are doing together it is a fine art of drawing someone out of asking questions to which you do not already know the answer or building a relationship based on curiosity interest in the other person so imagine now if i had not taken that approach with my son the other day i don't think you would be interested to have more conversation with me today i think at crossover there are so many recommendations that he has given given over over so many years yeah and uh, i'll just take a pause here and uh, any reflections any thoughts that you have on this definition or anything that you see you find it difficult to operate or what are your thoughts what are your reflections on this of uh, just a quick question right oh. uh, for me um, the challenge that i have is sometimes uh, because of your experience on all that you know how things are done right and you know how how you can go to the business or probably right. have those conversations and everything sometimes uh, you know when you have your team members who don't understand that even after explaining having the um, humble inquiry <laughs> how do you actually transition um into a smooth conversation right uh, the transition is very difficult sometimes when you go on uh, telling teaching and then it's not really working how do you come back to this kind of a uh, uh, discussion <laughs> or rather having a move back to the having a humble or probably a pleasant conversation very nice so it's a very very apt and i think many of us surely face this uh, problems any any thoughts anybody would like to respond to kavita very very nice uh, very nice question very relevant question anybody would like to give a shot i think um, this is indrajit here <laughs> yes i yes. think kavita you know what i found is usually what helps is if you've been able to develop a certain amount of credibility with the individual through some of your earlier conversations um, you know that actually paves a way for them to be more receptive it may not be easy to do when you have you know in transactional conversations but hopefully with the people who you engage with more often um it might be a little easier provided that you've built that credibility early on yeah that's been my experience and uh, uh, kavita my thanks indrajit for uh, for the response so kavita my uh, uh, you know personal experience and at crossover we have uh, you know a lot of people we take interns and 
my thinking is that uh, we bring in as many processes as possible in the whole company and that has been a tremendous help uh, even when people who possibly don't have enough talent or enough uh, gray matter to do things so intelligently so the process takes over meaning every day when people come into office uh, they have a standard operating procedure they have uh, things like google classroom uh, they have uh, tools that can tell them what they have to do how they have to do i mean to the extent that our finance team when they send the invoices we actually have a process of even looking at who should be kept in two who should could be in cc uh, there are email templates created for them you know if there is a response like this what should be your response so what is then happening kavita is that you are trying to reduce the dependency on people's uh, uh, talent with something that they can look upon and uh, you know and uh, practice that without they having to have that much of intelligence and i'm not undermining their intelligence which is sometimes some people have it some people don't have it but can i uh, can i create that uh, that environment where even a person who is not very talented is able to perform to a more satisfactory level and then your need to constantly monitor or constantly is focused on the process rather than the person because you are constantly asking them if this is a mistake hey, which template did you use uh, you know where did you go wrong and they go back and see oh maybe i should have used this template so next time again they kind of go and look for the template and then at some point kavita i have realized that they start coming and telling me that hey here is a new email that we have gone can we put it as a template and over a period of time uh, because what happens kavita is that if you are uh, if you are not doing all this you get too exhausted constantly teaching people now that first part is not easy because putting all these sops is quite a bit of task but it is if you do that one effort one time uh, it starts creating a very different environment yeah and uh, and that is where i think this session is all about because uh, you know if you were to uh, you know not really build that muscle power to not get upset uh, and be with them as indrajit said uh, it will help us to uh, you know not really demotivate them because the person who is not very talented is still wanting to do something in life and uh, if you support them with this processes they feel uh, they feel worth uh, that they are in the organization you know yeah indrajit you want to share something more yeah yogesh i actually had a question i mean yes. you know, because i've been uh, doing these sessions with you and you know yes. i've tried to constantly apply one of the challenges that i've often faced is the time constraint because when you want to do humble inquiry you know <laughs> you cannot um, expedite the process yes you need to have that space and the other person needs to be in that space to be <laughs> able to have that conversation Yes, yes yes and often that's one of the biggest challenges especially when you're handling large teams yes. or you know you're working with people who are even more busier than you are yes so yes. you know how do you in those situations how do you apply humble inquiry when you know that there is intent but there are constraints like mm-hmm. time yeah so probably yeah. uh, i'm sorry i'll probably add little more complexities to what indrajit just called out right yes you know companies are really fast paced nowadays yes yes you want everything to be done as on yesterday but we are already uh, two days behind right yes so w- which means to say when you're like so fast paced and there is a business requirement you always get into this thing you know you really want to be uh, balancing between uh, having an humble inquiry or probably because of your experience you know what it is you get it done because you actually start any discussion with what and why then how right mm-hmm. but when it comes to inquiry it's all about how then the rest part of it so mm-hmm. that's where i think you kind of get lost saying what's really happening here are, are you thinking properly that's something when i sit and reflect back am i thinking correctly or no that's a question that i ask for myself <laughs> so so kavita and indrajit uh, while what you are saying is absolutely a reality but um, in my thinking uh, you know you don't need to do humble inquiry with everybody 
you know what happens is that when you start doing with certain people who are working with you very closely like for example say puja adhikari is part of say crossover and if i do a humble inquiry with puja adhikari yeah, puja adhikari is doing the same thing with certain more people in the organization so i don't need to do the same thing with all the people so you are creating a culture within the organization by practicing that with certain people and you are creating that culture because otherwise what happens is that everybody is in that mode everybody is giving everybody telling direction nobody is asking what has to be done better and you will be surprised that many of the innovative ideas come from the people who are absolutely down the hierarchy because they are the people on the ground who are dealing with that so can you start creating that with certain people and you start seeing a shift and you don't need to do it so you can start compartmentalizing your uh, you know dealing on certain issues so you say that okay certain issues i'll apply this certain issues let it happen the way kavita it is happening in the mode so we are saying adopt this over a period of time it can't be done overnight but if you don't practice this then the telling will uh, will compound your problems more and more it will be just difficult to come back and recover from that and that will like lead to so much of cortisol in your body on your team's body in your entire department's body so you will have no choice but to uh, look for opportunities where you don't compound it you are trying to reduce it and over a period of next couple of months you come to a stage where only the uh, you know the uh, the level 1 or sos item you are dealing with that model of telling but rest all go into that mode because you have put in processes you have put in a culture of each one asking each other rather than telling each other and that becomes so powerful you know and uh, you know so yeah narsi please <laughs> yeah very interesting question both of them so i think <laughs> that dr david hawkins quotation that force invites down force so hmm. what you ended up is correct absolutely correct it increases cortisol so therefore humble inquiry in my humble opinion need not take time yeah let's seek answers through questions that can open up the space yes that's good enough it can be done in a corridor and the elevator so if somebody is late in something why are they late yeah i got to ask what happened yes that's respectful yes and it's curious and it demonstrates that i'm interested in the person than the task that i want to get done and yeah that. so i i feel i mean just want to present a point here yes before i sign off in about 5 minutes yes is that a uh, rather point that a point just to, something to ponder thus humble inquiry should really take time to have a conversation <laughs> So can we? It's about lifting the consciousness than lifting the time. It's my sense. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Narsi. I think, uh, and everybody, Kavita, Indrajit, uh, I keep always admitting that all this we learn teaches, uh, you know, not an overnight, uh, you know, thing. Uh, but uh, what I'm realizing over years is that, uh, you know, as we listen from lots and lots of participants, like I've been. a crossover is a 7 year old company we have got so many leaders who come back and tell us uh, that you know they started this and how it is changing the way they are operating and they are now at a stage where they are coming out of it you know they are not constant in that rut uh, of you know telling more but getting into humble inquiry so uh, when you look at this uh, you know this infographic of how uh, difficult things can be accomplished with Uh, you know enthusiasm joy and purpose so but what we want to drive here is that if you can start creating that in the team you will start seeing that lot of challenges that comes to you today will start reducing because the team will then start really thinking lot of oxytocin lot of new idea they will start solving problem themselves so this as mercy was giving this example right if somebody comes in late uh, you ask him uh, what happened versus why are you late here is a fantastic two examples if somebody is uh, you know uh, not send the report as per plan if you say that i was expecting the report by yesterday evening which is a very common thing that you would hear in 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 many managers saying versus did you face a challenge sending in the report yesterday well if you were and you can again i am bringing back to expectation and aspiration 
expectation is i expected the report yesterday aspiration is what and when you listen to that he would say that uh, you know i had this uh, big client escalation happening yesterday and i uh, just could not uh, finish that escalation and then you say oh there was this other team who could have looked into it you know like solving the problem so for next monday also you have solved the problem why didn't you use this template to create the report using our repository of template will help us bring consistency in our reporting right so i'm just giving you some very very common examples that can make a such a big difference in your way of working and you can create your own uh, own responses and i always recommend leader that if you work with limbic system you will constantly ask the question that you are used to asking question the question that your managers always asked you do you want to create a new set of questions that tomorrow your team will ask their reporters or their reporters you are creating a completely new culture with that uh, with that uh, new language that you are creating yeah so when you you know when you get this deck uh, take some time off to uh, think about the kind of questions you ask think about you know every situation that you are dealing with are you dealing with expectation are you dealing with aspiration yeah so i'm going to give you four questions which are four focus group questions and if we were to lead this in a regular you know session uh, we would essentially uh, you know uh, you know do a breakout room but i'm going to give you this questions and this will come to you in the leadership chaska and uh, i think karthik has sent the whatsapp link to all of you but you can uh, you can again look at in the chat window and join the whatsapp group and these are the four questions that uh you know that uh, kartik will run through the month and in those who are joining new uh, i want to share that uh, for next one month we are going to provide you support with uh, this uh, you know the application of learning and you can uh, you can ask any question we have got pooja jain pooja adhikari uh, these are our people from from crossover who can support you with any Uh, implementation that you you would uh, want to have uh, in the journey so you can uh, you can join the group and this questions will come to you in the next one month and by the time uh, you know you are ready for the next webinar you can practice this one skill uh, in the so after spending uh, time on uh, you know on uh, humble inquiry let's spend some time on the humility part of it because hum humble needs humility and edgar shin defines you know three types of uh, humility and uh, this three times and humility definition is uh, it's in more general sense granting someone else a higher status than one claims for oneself yeah there is a definition of edgar shin and so basic is you know like from our childhood if uh, you know we know that you know you are a brahmin or you know you are a certain caste or you belong to a certain you know community there has to be a certain respect that you know i have to give you uh, because you are that state with basic humility second is optional which is if suppose somebody has gained uh, you know say a very high status in the society they have uh, they have become you know senior in an organization so i respect them and i you know essentially give them that respect which is optional humility here and now turns around the table which means that Uh, when you are senior and if somebody is uh, really trying to operate with you with basic and optional you convert that to here and now which means that you actually humble down you essentially talk to everybody uh, in a tone that helps them to open up they let them to uh, you know ask any question that they don't feel fearful about asking the question so as a leader can i practice here and now humility which means that i don't really keep my position in the background i don't so i'm not saying that we should not be proud of what we have achieved in our lives but imagine that people are still operating with basic and optional to you but you have to turn it around and you have to you have to demonstrate here and now here and now is letting the other person feel very comfortable talking to you very comfortable asking you any type of questions 
so uh, i know kavita and indrajit imagine if we were to give that experience to people of here and now can you imagine how much of motivation how much of joy how much of enthusiasm this people will start bringing into the table so a combination of humble types which is here and now and then you look at this humble inquiry can be a super super combination means you are not doing diagnostic question you are not doing confrontational question you are not doing process oriented question but you are doing humble question you are doing humble inquiry with the background of here and now so if you do here and now with inquiry you can imagine how slowly you will start changing the environment that you are operating in so i'll just give you a sec few seconds to think about this the here and now and the humble inquiry question before i move into what are some of my ideas to help you develop humble inquiry but any thoughts or any reflections anything that you would like to share on this two slides very very important slides okay so i'll take leave yeah 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 nurse no, please please thank you so much for joining <laughs> yeah yeah so anybody else on on inquiry and here and now humility have you guys been practicing some of it do you find it connecting to how it will benefit you yeah so what what i have realized is here and now with the confrontational or the process word is always a conflict is something <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that. absolutely absolutely in fact so that's why kavita this all these webinars when we do every month is to uh, just you know open up our way of you know thinking put some introspection put some ideas so when you go back and read about uh, edgar shin's book on humble leadership and humble inquiry it can be so helpful to all of us you know and Uh, and we don't we don't usually keep the webinar very long it's usually 90 minutes so uh, to give you enough triggers so when you go back and uh, and if if you if you guys think and we've got a lot of companies calling us to do a full fledged seminar on the first session on this so we have a two half day sessions that we run you know with complete details complete personal uh, you know customized uh, for, for the organization yeah yeah indrajit you wanted to share something I actually wanted to share that you know uh, uh, very recently I've had the opportunity of working with a leader you know who's at an organizational you know C minus two level, and uh, I have seen the power of what you're teaching because you know he's you know he's a person who's had experience across fairly senior levels of management across different organizations, but yeah. you know he's forever. ready to apologize mm. if he feels that in some way um you know he's said something or done something that even would be very minutely uh, be taken differently and i think that changes the way he's perceived right. because by being humble he actually exudes a lot more power yes. than by somebody who um you know who would want to showcase power Yeah. by virtue of his position so just want to share that that i've actually seen when somebody uses language carefully right know, right he's very aware of how yeah. he's talking to each one of uh, you know yes. the individuals in the call yeah. and he's willing to apologize irrespective of who's there on the call i yeah. think it makes a substantial difference to the way conversations work right right thank you I think you should invite him to one of our webinars for ten minutes, and <laughs> he can share his experiences. You know, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Yogesh, yeah. Katya <coughs> wants you to explain about here and now humility again. So there's a request in chat box. I see. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So anybody would like to take a shot at it? <laughs> yeah. So said so that uh, while uh, somebody volunteers, see so here we are saying that 
you know if you are in a very senior position uh, there is a chance that you know people would really uh, not uh, you know not want to open up with you because they have their own you know inhibitions about saying ke are itne bade leader hain ya he is the head of the organization you know how can i talk to him so if you were to practice here and now so what you are doing is you are you are making the other person very comfortable so your first two humilities which is basic and optional uh, is which we see very common the basic is somebody is so even here and now is the other way around meaning you are making people so you can actually convert the basic and optional to here and now so even if i am a big brahmin for example and if i or if i am a big priest and people are are really uh, very talking to me if i were to practice here and now with them i'll make them very comfortable and i am going to talk about how do you make them comfortable so there are certain ideas of how do you use the body language what kind of language do you use like indraji said the person that you know we are uh, he is talking about how he makes everybody comfortable so even if he is a very senior leader in the organization people find it very okay to go and approach him because he is practicing here and now humility so you are basically converting your senior position to in a behavior that people don't feel uh, you know uh, any uh, they don't feel any uncomfortable in coming to you so that is you are demonstrating that comfort to your people and you know as we go along so that if you can hold on for some time you will see some ideas of how you can actually start developing humble inquiry skills you know, and these are some of the very nice interesting and they will come to you and you can take a look at it later also so slow down uh, you know and vary the pace so uh, as we were talking about you know if you are in constantly under pressure i think you have to slow it down you have to ask a lot of question that are very mindful and you are essentially becoming you know very sensitive about you know what people are responding and you are building relationship with i mean that cultural island is basically you are creating pockets of such humble inquiry when we talk to each other the entire organization get converted and there are a couple of ideas that i want to share with all of you and which you can practice as you go along the first idea is about people should be able to express themselves freely you know and we did talk about and you as a leader uh, will be able to do that if you practice here and now humility if you practice uh, the emotional intelligence part if you practice the conversation intelligence part and when you look at i think the barriers that you seeing in many many organizations could be many it could be the mindset it could be the skill set it could be the tool set also you know they don't really have a right mode of communication so respect for hierarchy if it is very deeply ingrained in people they would find it very difficult to really have an open communication the first idea about developing your humble inquiry is helping people to be very okay with not having this concern about hierarchy uh, even the language part so some people may not know proper english so they may be having their own inhibitions about uh, you know about uh, about uh, responding with the with the language being a barrier for communication or they don't have right mode of communication so when this comes to you you can think about all that and see within your team are there certain barriers that are coming to you the second idea is ask question that show trust and respect and uh, you know as uh, as you heard in you know with what indraji was saying that uh, you know when you are asking a question uh, are the other people finding it respectful and this will happen in situation where you know where things are not uh, going as per the plan or there is something that uh, that people are not doing uh, what you are expecting them to do and here is a very nice case study that i would like you all to practice in the leadership chaska group so you know assuming that you are a uh, you know department head of a you know uh, department in a college and you have got 15 professors reporting to you and the dean sends in a note to you saying that your department's bill was very high and he also gives you a list of the professors who made those phone calls you know and he is asking you to find out you know why this bills have gone so high now if you were a head of the department you know how can you really ask uh, the questions with humble inquiry 
if you directly ask this question to the professors and you know and you you know the professors may feel uh, that you know you're doubting their integrity or they may get upset if genuinely they have made calls which uh, could be a reason of the tariff getting higher or they don't know about uh, you know making calls to international location is creating so we don't know what is the background but how can you do that part so if you can practice this question and what you will see out of that is it humble inquiry is more than just a strategy for formulating question it's an attitude and we have been talking about attitude quite a bit you know from the beginning where we are saying that when if i have the attitude of not doubting the professor only then i will be able to ask question to them the moment i doubt them that oh these professors are useless and they are going to make this expense they are they are they are not really caring about the budget that we have you know a lot of this things can come into your mind and if you don't have this attitude then you will ask a lot of question by you know not you know not having a very closed question but an open ended question with who what when where and how did it happen yeah so you can essentially doing is that you are conveying respect through uh, through the question you are giving control to the other person because you are not really making a judgment about the other person but you are giving control to them asking them what could you tell us about the situation where this happened and all across you are seeing in this webinar today that the moment you use some of these uh, skills you start really knowing the reality of what has happened rather than people not sharing with you and that really helps you do that and then last is that humble inquiry would need some additional skills beyond asking questions so the third idea is not just that asking just the question is enough but there could be many other things and i just want to like we are at 5:15 i'll take another 10 minutes to finish the remaining part of the webinar uh, which are couple of more slide so here is a very nice story that i want to share with all of you and these are coming under additional skills so so far what we have we have what you learned is starting with ai as the background using conversation intelligence in the conversation building the mindset of humility which is about here and now asking the questions with humble inquiry and not really having doubts and then finally we are coming to some additional questions uh, additional skills that is beyond the questions and here is a very interesting story about a you know about a professor uh, you know who was very popular in his college to teach accounting and uh, you know he would always uh, use donkey as an example you know so he would say that uh, uh, if you buy 10 donkeys at 100 rupees and if you sell them at 200 rupees then you are making a profit of 100 rupees on every donkey and if you have bought uh, 10 donkeys and sold 10 donkeys you will make 1000 rupees so one of his students uh, in the college becomes a very big builder and he has created malls and big shopping complexes and you know he is uh, sitting in his mall in the glass cabin and he sees uh, uh, his professor walking inside the mall and he gets very excited about uh, you know seeing the professor and he comes out of his cabin and rushes to the professor and hugs him and says that you know professor whatever i am today is because of you the way you taught me in the college i really owe everything to you whenever i see a donkey i remember you so if you look at the content what he said was nothing wrong if you look at the intent is also very good that he wanted to appreciate but he did not understand the context which means the donkey ka context in the accounting classes was all right but not in this context so your content and your intent if not kept with the context can become a big challenge in humble inquiry in humble leadership so what are you saying even with your great intention if you don't keep the context in mind you will not be able to create the right impact so this is another aspect that we have to start keeping in mind and becoming very mindful about what are we asking what is the context you know what is the intent the well, intent and content may be root right but unless with the context it may not be create the impact and i think some of these uh, are like i while i know that these are very basic and most of you 
have gone through all this know everything but then you would see that your body language your words and tones your listening skills all play a very big role in you becoming a humble leader so the the classic mehra bin so we did speak about the words composition we speak spoke about the expectation versus uh, aspiration and all this will now come together as you start practicing when you go back and start thinking about yourself that how do you operate as a leader you know what all this component so some people may be good at certain area some people but this whole uh, session that we are talking about can really help you become a very powerful leader and uh, this is a very classic you know mehrabian study that you would have seen uh, you know like for years together that body language plays almost like a 55% role in the way we communicate you know 38% is voice but only 7% is words so imagine if you can combine the attitude that we learned if you can combine ear that we learned use conversation intelligence uh, ask right question with uh, these elements of communication can make you a very very powerful uh, leader yeah so this comes to our last slide so i'll uh, we're at i think 5 uh, 15 we have what 10 15 more minutes so uh, i'll maybe unshare the screen for uh, for a few minutes and any any questions you guys may have any thoughts you all can turn on your cameras and uh, as if possible if there is nobody in the background i would like you all to be on the camera and you can share with us you know your thoughts your your reflection what do you guys think yeah uh, so looks like i have one more question i'm sorry please please kavita yeah. my pleasure yeah yeah so i think see i think voice and tone are a very toughest uh, aspect when you talk about the body language or you, even when you talk about the listening aspect of it how do you really work on uh, especially the voice and tone voice to except to some extent i can understand right because sometimes even being assertive can be wrong aggressive can be totally wrong <laughs> oh so, so what is the right balance how do you really gauge that yeah so any i think uh... indraj is has been responding to your questions every time and i think anybody else also can take a shot uh, at what kavit uh, is asking ajit is our champion senior facilitator so any any thoughts on what kavit is asking or anybody else also indraj is also no i'm not going to take a shot at this one <laughs> yeah yeah sure so indraj uh, any thoughts here yeah? so Honestly, you know i mean if you ask me it's just about practice you know kavita a lot of the questions that you're asking are things that i personally struggle with but what i've realized is probably um you know once you start practicing the things that we are learning over time you uh, probably use the feedback that you get from people and i try to use that a lot um to see what i'm not able to see if there are people who are good mentors and who are able to give you critique and um, use that in some way to modify some of the things that uh, you know you need to change i think that that's one of the things that i do to see what are the specific nuances of my communication that i need to change yeah and uh, and kavita my you know, frankly there are a lot of you know help available today you know like there are people who can really help you change the way you have conversation Uh, it's just about reaching out to people. Like uh, at Rossor, we have some very nice coaches who really help you in uh, really changing the way you operate. Uh, and uh, one thing we are very conscious is that we don't want to uh, let your natural self go away. You know, so uh, we don't want to be ha- having you sound as you are animating something. It should be very natural to you. You know, but in that natural context, can you make small, small adjustment, and that can make a very big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Just to add to what Yogesh was saying, to basically make it a way of life. Yes. So that it comes out naturally to you and for you in any communication that you make, whether it's personal or professional. Yes. It's got nothing to do with you know work or uh, family life. Right? Just the yes. way you communicate. In fact, yes. very often I worked in Xerox for many many years. Yes. 
And there is certain way I communicate is coming from my earlier days. And my wife very often, you know, tells me that, listen, don't uh, do Xerox on me. <laughs> now, um, it's not something that I consciously do. Uh, <laughs> we were always asked, uh, you know, to before we answer to inquire before um, making a response to anything instead of reacting. And it's not mm -hmm. easy for me to stop asking questions and inquiring. Uh, before I give a response. And I've been teaching seven habits and in that also Dr. Kavi often says, you know, seek first to understand before you, uh, you know, respond. So diagnose before you prescribe. When it becomes a way of life for you, then you just do it naturally. It's mm -hmm. not something that's, uh, out of the extraordinary. And when you start putting these little, little practices in, you know, in your way of living and the way of communication, it, it comes naturally to you. It's not easy, but this little, little, little uh, tuning that you do, uh, like if I can give an example of a mechanic uh, who used to repair my car, um, he used to ask me, you know, how do you know that your car is doing well and your engine is responding well? Uh, so he says, uh, I told him that, listen, you don't do things that the normal mechanics do using electronic gadgets and things like that. You keep using just to tap it. Uh, and he says, can you go to the rear of the vehicle? So I said, okay. He said, what do you see? He said, I saw little droplets of water coming out, you know, condensation happening at the back, uh, coming out from the, uh, what is it, the exhaust pipe. So he said, do you see any droplets of water coming out from there? Uh, I said, yes. He said, see, when your engine is well-tuned, I can do it physically to make it, you know, in such a way that it sings well and condensation happens well. So similarly, when you're actually communicating, uh, right. it should be something so sweet that it should be very smooth. Uh, it's not something which is out of the ordinary. And when it becomes a way of life for you, uh, people will start responding to you. It becomes, uh, you know, sort of a culture. Everybody starts responding to you in that way. And then everybody else starts communicating in the same way. So then oh. build a bigger sort of... Uh, group of people first with small small people then everybody starts talking and then it becomes a greater uh, way of life within your team within the organization and i mean i can give an example of ratan tata or even abdul kalam who are very very humble people but they are positioned in a very very high level and uh, i don't think they get very flustered very easily and <laughs> i mean look at it we revere these individuals in our life and I think the current example I would give is also Anand Mahindra. Yeah. The way he responds uh, in the, on the Twitter. Uh, you know, he brings in a lot of humility, a lot of fun in his interactions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you went on mute, Ajit. Yeah, just check your... Yeah. Sorry. I'm saying, uh, you know, if you have... Uh, I, the current example would be Anand Mahindra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Twitter, the way he responds to people to the questions that people ask, irrespective of who is asking, you know, he yeah. always has a witty response. And yeah. I think that is the way he responds naturally in an organization. You know, yes. This entire organization must be responding like that. So, uh, so Kavita, so, I just thanks. Yeah, it's perfect. I think. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I just realized that uh, we have this one value at crossover called humility, actually. So, uh, so now I am realizing that, uh, you know, how much what Ajit said, uh, if you practice over a period of time, and Anand Mahindra is a great example of that. You know? Yeah. So Ajit, you wanted to add something more at the end? Uh, uh. I think I've said my piece, maybe Indrajit or Kavita, or maybe even Satya. Satya had a question whether there is something called psychological safety, hmm. which you create and you build trust when you're using this mode of communication. I think that's the truth, right? Unless you don't create a psychological safety, uh, your team members will not uh, have the strength to come and speak to you. Yes. You know? uh, because, I mean, anything is sensitive. We don't know that side of the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to allow them to cross their bridge to come and speak to you with confidence that, you know, they will not get bitten or burnt when they say something to you. Right, right, right. Perfect, yeah. So good. So, Someone you want to like we have another two, three minutes, and I just wanted to also flash uh, 
you know the plan for the next month so anyway if you can share then i would open it up yeah yeah so sorry okay shay i didn't catch it what is that what you yeah want? no no uh, you know indrajit wanted to i think share something yeah so i think uh, i just wanted to thank ajit because you know whatever yogesh you've been teaching over the last you know one and a half two years that you know i've been working on uh, i think ajit said something very significant is making it a way of life because i often think there are these constraints which do not allow me uh, to be uh, humble in my inquiry but i think you know he said it that if you just make it a way of life and instead of looking at the constraints you kind of assume that yes that's who i can be you know you might find ways to overcome that constraint and for me you know that's something that i'm taking away from today's session to see mm-hmm. if uh, you know if if we can do that and really make humble and fair way of life yeah thank you Ajit. thank you thank you i think we had a good time as always i think uh, these thank sessions you. like uh, just time flies we are already uh, you know at 525 and just 5 minutes to go so team uh, thanks everybody for joining i really appreciate you guys taking time and ji thank you so much for uh, for being a participant and contributing to uh, you know to other participants learning uh, next month we are inviting ramesh durai raj and i really want all of you to attend this session he, you know i personally know ramesh for like more than a decade now uh, not only as a friend uh, as a colleague but you know as somebody i look up to to take lot of guidance from he's also a, a consultant for some of our ca- accounts where he helps organizations to build their sales sales organization and i have requested him to join Uh, next month because you have you guys have seen me enough and you may want to have a new face and somebody else also because i don't want you to get bored of me and not come so i thought thoda break dete and we would also like to hear from you uh, are there any topics that you want us to create you know because as you, as as you all know that we have an in house content team and we have puja jain also here and uh, i think ankita uh, yamini a uh, lot of people from crossover who are there to really create uh, you know and kartik is anyway one of the people who is driving all this to let us know any time in the leadership chaska group uh, that you know is there a topic that you want us to run the webinar for because uh, these are like for you you know this is a not not a paid event uh, and we want to really be in touch with what people want uh, because these are also giving us lot of a uh, leads a lot of references that when you like our webinar you go and tell more people that oh this is a nice organization and we get a lot of work uh, you know from our references so and feel free to invite as many of your colleagues uh, in in your organization if you are part of any group i know bharti is here bharti has been my customer also and she is consented to come here today for the session and i thank bharti for that so do let us know um, you know any topic that you would like us to conduct in the coming month but next month we have planned to get ramesh dorai raj again it would be uh, the third or the fourth thursday of every month yeah so that has been our standard so bharti thanks for joining you look thank you sir as gorgeous as always so welcome here <laughs> thank yeah. you sir sure so thank you everybody and uh, i look forward to seeing you and uh, kartik i think you have already posted the the leadership chaska uh, you know uh, let me know our link right so if yes, you can yeah. post it again and then we can yeah so maybe some one small suggestion normally today only i got it when i was sending to hr groups you know yes, yes. today is 30th right the last day of the month so normally yes. hrs are busy doing payroll <laughs> Maybe yeah. I can hear consideration for next time. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Actually, what happened is it was actually scheduled last Thursday, but I was at a wedding in Delhi, mm-hmm. so we could not. Uh, so next month, I think it will be on third Thursday. You know, most likely. I think it is on twenty first. I think I guess. So we'll see. But we'll try to not uh, do it on the last day. This is a very rare. You know, you know, that's what I got to do only. You know, when I was sending to all the other groups. Yeah. And... Sure, 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 sure. No problem. But you can send them the recording. They will enjoy listening to the recording. You know. Yeah. 
Sure. So you are sending PPT as well? Yes, it is on the PPT also. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank Everybody you. have Thank a nice you. evening. Bye. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thank you. Thank you.